Here are the horoscopes for the week of the 6th to the 12th of June 2016. The weekend begins with the new moon in Gemini and this will be a welcome relief. We've had three weeks of very intense and deep Taurian energy and that culminated recently with the dark moon in Taurus where we were able to go in and release what we've been learning especially through the Mercury retrograde in Taurus. So now we're into the new moon phase and it begins with a still quite a challenging week as we have a grand cross in the sky. So we have the moon, the sun and Venus opposite Saturn. That's one of the main features and this is teaching responsibility, honesty and discipline. So the sun and the moon in Gemini, that's the new moon, but Venus is in there as well. And we've reconnected with the heart during the month of Taurus and gone right back deep into our core values, what we will and won't allow and what nourishes us and what draws our energy away. So what we're giving our value and our love to needed to be recentered there to make sure that it felt right rather than just doing things out of the sake of responsibility or um, a concept of this is what it takes to be loving but to actually go back in and figure out what we really do love and that can only be done on a heart feeling level. But we're opposite Saturn, retrograde in Sagittarius, so this is giving us that backbone. It's saying go back to the core, nourish that core strength and be realistic. Make sure that whatever you're building on from now on is worthy, has longevity, has dignity and will support you. So a big learning curve there always with Saturn in Sagittarius, being real, being true and seeing things with mature eyes, seeing the, the core message in whatever's been going on. This Grand Cross also has Jupiter pulling away from an opposition in Neptune and we've spoken about that in past weeks which has been a sense of uh, the left and the right brain if you like or reality versus delusion or imagination being the place that we create our reality from rather than the limited thoughts so as Jupiter steps forwards now we're unlimited we can actually start to put our effort into action and that will be more realistic rather than building castles in the air so those are the two sets of oppositions but that also brings in four squares so it is quite complicated but we've got Saturn square Neptune. So that's always a very interesting one and I feel that comes in for the middle of the week. So are we seeing what we want to see? Are we just seeing what we've been told to see? Are we seeing what we've always seen without going back and checking? This is going to have us seeing our lives through new eyes and even visualizing our world from a deeper place. So a very strong square there especially by Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturn square Neptune, really showing us where we can kind of shift our gaze, where we can focus our attention and make sure that it's real and expansive as well. So there has been some tension lately and this week it's about conflict resolution really. By Monday, this Grand Cross will really show us how to stop, listen, and resolve any conflict on the inside or the outside. So Saturn's calling for patience and dignity. Jupiter is calling for higher perspective. And then the sun is showing us where we can shine that light into the Neptune mists and actually find a sense of reality, something that we can build upon. And we can see anything that we've been through through many different aspects. So we're rising up with that perception now and we can see things from all angles. So we're going back over the last three weeks, but really there's aspects that take us all the way back to the beginning of the year. We're coming out of the Mercury retrograde and this will actually start to feel like that by the end of the week when this Grand Cross begins to dissipate as well. But if we go back over the last three weeks, Mercury in Taurus has sh shown us how to align the mind with the heart and to actually get in contact with the heart mind to actually start working from there. So it's been a very interesting one, full of challenges, but as Mercury steps forward by the end of the week, it's good this week to have a retrospective. Where were your mind and your heart out of alignment? What have you learnt? Take it to heart and actually make that a nourishing lesson that you can grow upon.
rather than taking any negativity or pain or victimhood forwards, um, wrapping yourself in a story and feeling sorry for yourself, get into the reality of what's happened, learn the lesson, get stronger from it, and then by the end of the week we can move on. But we're also in the middle of a Mars retrograde. So Mars went into Scorpio from January to March, then popped into Sagittarius, retrograded in April, and will come out of that retrograde by the end of June, and then out of the full phase by the beginning of August. So we're currently in phase two. Whatever came up January to March, Mars in Scorpio being piercing into the depth, seeing what's going on behind the scenes and diving into the subconscious. There has been a certain aspect of being shown our manipulative side, our repressed anger, our possessiveness or jealousy, and how that's actually been palpable on the outside and how that can then attract drama to us. So the first phase, January to March, was very much the awareness. Anything that came up there has now gone into retro from April to the end of June. We go in and find our responsibility for it. Where is the repressed anger? Where is it that we're attracting to ourselves from suppressing things inside? And then that manifests in manipulative behavior or dodgy narratives that can then attract to us the very thing that we're trying to hide away from. So there's a sense of reality here, that laser vision, you can run but you can't hide, all the way through June now, take everything inside, what is it in me that I'm running away from, what is it in me that I'm repressing, what is it that I've built a story and I'm angry about, and can I actually go and face that anger, can I actually take responsibility for it so that I no longer have to attract drama from the outside or someone else to come along and pull that out of me. So it's very cleansing, really piercingly cleansing aspect there with Mars in Scorpio. And then from June onwards, there should be that sense of empowerment that we've gone in, we've cleaned ourselves up, we've elevated our vibration and now we're working with that Mars energy to create something magnificent rather than run away from something that's pulling us down. By the end of the week Mars opposes Mercury so there could be some realizations there on Friday might be a realization as to what we've been thinking and what we've been actually sending out and how we can change those thought patterns, how we can actually purge those. So it doesn't have to be necessarily uh, difficult if we're honest with ourselves. The great theme of this week is self-honesty, discipline and responsibility. Then as we go into the weekend, we're in the full swing of the Gemini New Moon two-week window, but we can start setting intentions then because the grand square starts to dissipate. And if we've done the work this week, then we should have learnt all the lessons. So by next week, we have Mercury out of retrograde, we have the New Moon window to work with, and we have the lessons that we've assimilated from the Grand Cross. So all told, a very introspective week. Um, so many things going on there that there's too much to recap, but go deep, think deeply, think alignment, think honesty, go and explore some of the inner landscape, the inner victim, the inner warrior, the inner child, and see if you can bring some cohesion, because the two twins of Gemini want to find that fusion. So by going in and finding out what's playing up on the inside, we can actually integrate that part of ourselves once we've listened to it and become more whole as a result, which is the job of Gemini. So those are the horoscopes for this week, and I'll see you next week. If you have a website and you'd like to have these horoscopes as part of your website, then please do feel free to copy the link to the YouTube playlist because that means that that will update itself every week as I post a new video. Or if you're not sure how to do that, then if you email me, then I can help you. But you're very welcome to have these videos as part of your own website, which may bring new visitors to your site or return visitors as well. So do contact me if you're interested in that. For anybody learning their chart, it's very worth looking at where Gemini is to see where all this action is going on. And we have the house system in the chart, so each different section represents a different part of our lives. So this energy is going on in different places for different people. 
So if you'd like to explore that, I have an online group that you can come and join, post your chart up and join in with the chats about how to apply the current energy to our lives and how to work with our birth chart and learn it as we go along. Or well, you're very welcome to come to me on Skype or in person for a one-to-one -one reading where we can explore this very deeply. And I do record the sessions and include free tarot as well. Or well, you're very well to come and join one of my online courses. Uh, there's six small modules or the big full degree course, each one having notes and a video and email access so that you can learn at your own time and pace. So for any of those, please do contact me, zoehind7 at gmail.com.